<laughs> anyway, we got Freeman with us tonight, guys. Freeman Fly, man, from Freeman TV, the Freeman Perspective, man. Thanks so much for coming on the show, hanging out with us tonight, man. It means a lot. Hey, no problem, man. I was looking forward to meeting y'all. Yeah. We've been hearing a lot about you from Alonzo. Alonzo, Alonzo likes to name drop. <laughs> no, I don't name drop, man. He does name drop. People, no, people we know. talk all the time. So. I know, I know, I know. He's just talking I, people, about his day. Yeah. <laughs> I know that you talk, talk all the time. We didn't even talk about life. That's about it. We don't really talk about when we do speak. So it's like, you know. Yeah. He's well, an awesome guy. Good friend. You know? That's what's up, man. Yeah, yeah. Freeman, you're a legend, man. Like I said, man, we've been I've been watching your stuff for, for years. And I would say that you were probably at the forefront of a lot of these theories before they actually became popular and they went viral. And the irony is it was – uh you, you hardly ever got a majority of the credit that you should have for a lot of the stuff that you managed to research and, and bring to the forefront. Uh, when you, when you came, when you found out about the nine 11, man, the nine 11 coincidences and how these buildings were built on nine 11 and uh, how that connected to a lot of, uh, the military, uh, which was the shock and awe and the Shekinah, man. I just remember hearing all these theories you were throwing out there, and it was just, it was blowing my mind, man. You know, I don't like to bitch, but uh, I'm actually hurt that I'm seeing all these reports of Hillary's a clone and uh, Taylor Swift's a clone of Zena LaVey. Uh, and I'm seeing this stuff come through yeah. my wire. It's coming down my Twitter feed. It's coming in my Facebook and it's just coming all over me. And I'm like, <laughs> damn you. I've never seen even one single debunking of Obama being a clone of Akana. And I have not seen a Snopes. There's not a care in the world that I have proven this. Or maybe it's just such a solid researched argument you're making that they just... No, I am the Rodney Dangerfield conspiracy, <laughs> but I don't complain. That's how it works, man. It's <laughs> the name of the game. I, I tell you, I, no, no, but seriously, when I saw that Taylor Swift LeVay thing, I'm just like curses. Yeah. I can't believe nobody picks up on my stuff. I've got children. There are kids in elementary school who are taking my Obama clone theory and taking it into the classroom and getting an A. I mean, they are proving their theory in front of an entire astonished elementary school class and teacher. And they're writing me letters saying, wow, I got an A on my report on cloning. Thank you so much. A child can show and prove exactly what I'm saying. I'm more perplexed by the fact that a child has access to such esoteric and a cold subject matter. It's perplexing me just how much. It's not a cold. I mean, we got glow in the dark cats. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, you well, know, this stuff is. I'm not throwing it into a negative connotation. I'm just saying it just amazes me that so many people can access uh, so much information nowadays through the internet, you know, thanks to the internet. And, oh, without a doubt. It's, what it's we're learning exponential. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you just have to open these things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, read. And yeah. luckily, some of the academics. I mean, name a topic. Name a topic. I got. I, I, oh, I got okay. one. I got one. What's your uh, o- What's your oldest Manly P. Hall book? Oldest man. Oh well, my favorite one is the Phoenix. Oh yeah. And this one, which also holds my uh, house <laughs> tier certificate, that was handed wow. to my mother from Walt Disney himself. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. I remember seeing that when you were recording Sean Young and Alonzo, you were on that video too. Right. Yeah. You were right. You I, I had all kinds thing. of secrets in this one. This is a this is an original Paul Laffley. Oops. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, poor Paul Laffley. He was the Twin Tower architect that the Bin Ladens asked him where to put the demolition charges. Uh, wow. This is his drawing as he's describing to me. Oh, that's the one at the picture, right? That you have where you're sitting at the ch- the table yeah, with it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he is describing to me what the Raelians are up to, and the helmet-headed lady that was fighting him with Rael. Uh, yes. he, you know, he signed it as a, a work of art. Wow. But so that's 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 Paul Laffley's take on the Raelians. I have one more of his time machine, and he is. Oh well, this one. 
Okay, this is Paul Laffley. Original artworks. He's dead now, you know. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this one is, I think that's a space elevator, if I remember correctly. Yeah. These are the paintings he did of Elvis's life story, wow. of how Elvis's twin, identical twin brother either didn't die in the womb or did, but he had to do paintings of it all. It was really bizarre. Uh, but actually, I have them on film explaining all of this. It's well, you have, where do you keep your childhood drawing? That's that very iconic picture you, you yeah, that show everybody. Closet. I can't believe, honestly, like it's really bizarre that out of all the things I've lost in my life, but that I still have, have that thing. I mean, this house that I'm in right now is the first house that I've ever lived in that I have all my things in one place. Yeah. I've had all my things hidden for a decade in grandmother's basements and different houses. Mm. And finally, when I moved here, it all came together. Uh, it was uh, this it, book. Bringing in all this rich knowledge into your home and all these really books. Did the thing. You ever see any of these entities in your home or you ever feel any uh, energies or spirits there? I never really have. I did once when I was doing Anna Nicole, Brittany, and Mind Control. I yeah. had a, my roommate moved out. My roommate took one look at me and uh-huh. saw me ashen with uh, dilated pupils because I had just said the scariest stuff I had ever said in my life live on the air. Mm-hmm. I think uh-huh. I even had Henrik pull the second hour of the show so that no one could hear it. Because wow. I freaked myself out with what I had just exposed, and I had never had that. But then it felt like I had been under some psychic attack, and every night at 3 in the morning, I would get these horrible panic attacks. I mean, oh, wow. severe. Yeah. year. And my roommate saw this, and he bugged, and he moved. And, uh, I mean, it was that bad. I left everything behind, jumped in my vehicle, and tried to drive home to my mom without even enough money for the gas to get there. Yeah. And I got there. I never remember how I manage these things. People used to ask me that all the time after I'd come out of a long journey. And they're like, you know, I'm like, oh, well, I've been to the top of the mountains. I've been down to the beach, been over here, been over there, up here. I stayed there. I went and did this rich thing. I was at this millionaire. You know, I met this band. And I come back home and they're all like, well, how did you do that? Oh, uh, Synchronicity. I honestly never thought about it until you asked. So <laughs> let me see. And then, yeah, the Silstein prophecies came out and explained it to the me. friendship agenda, man. Everybody yeah. just puts in and, and shares in their material possessions, in their love. And before you know it, just things come about, man. I, I, you've been all over the place. I remember you were driving around in a bus for a while, streaming yeah. your live podcast, man. I remember watching that for a while. That was, that was amazing. That's because podcasts don't pay. So <laughs> oh, you guys aren't willing. You know, we were homeless. We were living in, in the street. Yes. Our bus, you know, still doing the show. Still, you know, still broadcasting. I made that bus full Wi-Fi. And <laughs> Whatever I, happened to that bus? I'm, I'm curious. Well, like Woody Harrelson, you know. Whatever happened to the bus? I sold it. You sold there, it? Okay. Get the bus, dude. Don't ever buy a bus, all right? <laughs> oh, really? Get a hybrid. That's a lot it's to luggage around. around. <laughs> oh, my God. I got two miles to the dollar. And wow. you have no idea how tiring wow. it is to drive a two twenty ton vehicle with a poodle in your lap. Mm. <laughs> she would ride in my lap the entire time. There was an entire bus behind me with a bed and couch and Monty and Jamie and everybody. Wow. And... Yet she was right there in my lap the whole time while I drove. Yeah, there's a video of you driving, like you're singing too. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I think it was the free zone. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen them. Right? Yeah, it seemed cozy though, man. It seemed like it was. Yeah, like- it was just every time you park somewhere within three days or less, and I have a whole stack of them. You got your code compliance ticket. You mm-hmm. cannot park a bus in a neighborhood, yeah. and so everywhere we went, we were run off. Yeah. It was a nightmare, basically. Yes, I Emily. Park that thing downtown. Uh, <laughs> I got pretty good at it, man. I seriously could like drive that school bus like it was a Toyota. <laughs> I got my Turn CDL. It on the time. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I know what you mean. I got my CDL. The entire year from October to October, from twenty. Hey, so yeah. whatever, whatever happened with you and 
coast to coast, man. Did they ever? Did they ever reach out to you? Did you ever go through with that? Because I remember hearing you were old. There, a lot of your fans were reaching out and saying, "Why isn't he on the show, man? Why yeah. won't they cover someone like you?" They even said they would uh, quit their subscriptions, and I, there was a whole campaign. You know, get yeah. Freeman on coast to coast. Wow. I personally met George Norrie twice. Let me prove it. Yeah, I've met him. Okay. T- I've met him a couple times too at your free. Let, me just, let me just prove it. All Let's right, see. I'm not joking around. What's that there say? Uh-huh. And powerful name, right? Great uh-huh. powerful name, and uh, George Norrie. George Norrie. Right. Okay, so that's his book. Just want to oh. say, you know, I met the man. Yeah. <laughs> no, you have that picture too with him. And I, I uh, you know. I gave them Anna Nicole, Brittany, and Mind Control. That's what I was doing at that time. It wasn't even Obama cloning yet. You know, it was the most yeah. heinous story I'd ever told in my entire life. It blew the lid off of trauma-based mind control. I gave you clear and classic examples, and there was weird occulted nut stuff with Brittany and, uh, you know, and Anna Nicole. And uh, it freaked me out big time, you know, to tell this to the world. And I, it was Fritz Springmeier's. These things, oh my god! You know, I, I can just keep going on and on with it. Yeah, Fritz Fritz Bingmeier talked a lot yeah. about the Monarch programming. I remember he he expanded a lot on that. Well, yeah, this whole book is just a list of triggers and codes, right? <laughs> yeah, so that's how to create your own undetectable Illuminati mind control slave. Mind control slave, yeah. Yeah, classic, right? Interesting. You can just go through this, like like Britney Spears was in a video, and she's handed seashells. And and all of a sudden she stops talking and yeah. she's led away by Guillermo, who's this demon. And so, you know, you just flip open, okay, Fritz, what the heck seashells got to say about this? And it's in there. Mm-hmm. And it says seashells are a sign that they're always listening. And it turned out wow. Brittany was in a news, uh, you know, in, in a, a conference and suddenly shut up when she got the, the shells. And it explains it exactly in that book. So you start to see these things start to, they, they're they happening right in front of you. And for some reason, the universe stuck me on the couch for the entire Anna Nicole court case. And I have no idea why, but I watched it all. I watched every moment. I knew every secret and everything that had gone on with it. And so anyway, I tried to expose that through coast to coast and they all shook my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Took my DVDs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then nothing. I would call. Yeah, I appreciate though that Clyde Lewis did manage. You reached out to him and you were working with him for a while. Uh, Ground Zero, man. I really jo- enjoy that show. I still listen to it uh, when you were on there with um, uh, one of the uh, leaders of the uh, what Rex was it? Church. Yeah, Rex Church, man. I, I remember listening to that one. But yeah, uh, Clyde Lewis, you know, opened up with his medium, and you got a lot of your information out there, luckily, whereas where George Norrie wouldn't, you know, broach that, even dare to broach it. Well, see, I'm also uh, on Jimmy Church, and me and Jimmy yeah. are close, and he's now the, the weekend yeah. host of Coast to Coast. It should be open door, <laughs> man. So, you know, I tried to bug him a little bit, saying, why am I banned from Coast to Coast? And all he could really do was guess, and he didn't know either. So yeah. heard, no one I've knows. I've heard several why stories about Freeman people being George out. Is a jealous. I've heard. I've heard stories I don't know. about that. You uh, know, I think that they're not allowed to say certain things. And Santos I'm not, can't go on there. Yeah. You know? Santos. I've never. Yeah, I've never heard of Santos yeah, Bonacci. He, he's on, tried to on get on there. They won't have him. Yeah. 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 Santos. I've talked it blew to my mind because I mean I'm the product of Coast to Coast. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you think you, I learned about harp? Exactly. You, know? <laughs> you are the iconic centerpiece of what everything is that coast to coast is not at the moment. Yeah, to and to be honest, they won't touch certain things that are too politically Man. heated or too exactly. far out there. I tell you, I tell you what, like I love coast to coast, and I've and I, it, I've there was points where I was just like four hours a day. Four hours a day because I drive yeah. for a living. I listen to him every day. Download the podcast, but now I, I'm. I mean, t- to speak the truth, it's like these people are making it up as they go. You know that, right? These people are making this stuff up Which as people? they go. A lot of people. A lot of people are talking about they have contact with the angels and aliens. Oh, and, you're talking about like guests that come yeah, on and just yeah, the, use yeah, nonsense. The different guests are making it up as they go. There's people in the church arena who or like in the prophetic who like are sensitive to the spirit. They make it up as they go. It's like, man, like 
why do you need to do that when there's people out there who are really tapped in and who really know what they're talking about, who can show you the research, show you the uh, information on it, and you got these people on there, you, they're not believable. You ask them a question, they make it up as they go. It makes yeah. no sense. Okay, on to the next call. Like, Hold on. Somebody's got to call bullshit. Somebody's yeah. got to call bullshit. You guys are making it up. And you guys are promoting this because they have a book and they have these, this, this machine behind them. So I kind of lose all respect for it, even though I want to listen to them and I want to hear, like, who's the latest people out there in ufology and research. And I'm listening. I'm like, man, it's fun. It sounds good. But I, I don't believe it, man. You're not believable. You know? Yeah. So I mean, I wonder who Coast to Coast is bought out by or who controls yeah there's definitely an overlord i know that no definitely yeah yeah so uh, you went to the free your mind uh uh conference i I noticed and uh what was your experience there man well you know i was just thinking about how andrew bashago watched my lecture on obama being a clone at free your mind and then was like dude i went to mars with obama (laughs) and then i saw him on stephen colbert talking about that uh and i'm the i'm the reason i triggered his memory of going to mars with obama with my lecture and he told me this uh so you know you just never know but um yeah free your mind is is an epic adventure it's way more of an experience than it is a conference and i guess a lot of conferences get that way eventually but this one just it was hip right from the getting go. You would have thought you were at a festival this last one. There were hippies in blankets surrounding the whole. <laughs> you were wafting through marijuana smoke, walking in and out. And I mean, people were, you know. Oh, you had movie stars there too. Yeah. So. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Have you seen Jesse Ventura's latest campaign, Marijuana Can Save the World? I haven't. Yeah, go check out his Twitter. Uh, Jesse Ventura. Yeah, Mark Pasios has done a good job with. Uh, structuring the free your mind uh conference. Yeah, Bob he's doing such, yeah he he's a wealth of knowledge man i'm amazed by what mark Passio has come out with he's like benjamin franklin yeah man he's <laughs> i can't keep up with the things he keeps putting out there and they're so well researched what is it get us get as offended as you want there, there's the door yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously, powerful. free your mind a lot of times feels like you've stepped into the halls of 1776 and you're watching these, you know, national leaders speak because, uh, yeah, it feels like that with Passio and even Max Egan and the passion and the drive of people that really want to do stuff, you know, like get off your arse. Uh, most of them live in a shed, but, you know, that's... <laughs> That's the best way to live, man. You know, Jordan Maxwell lived in a shed. Max Egan lived in a shed. Alex Ansari lived in a shed. I lived in a bus. Uh, you know, that's the, the world of the truth. or yeah, The truth, or exactly. The, the people that care the most usually uh, have little of material substance, but they have a wealth of heart and knowledge and, and just good friendship and love to offer. And that's, um, that's how you usually know you're doing something right. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not something that you're going to be in it for the material, for the, for the wealth you're in it to just bring love and understanding and bring people out of the, the cave of ignorance. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's the beauty of it. Um, so what, what, what's an overarching theme that you've been coming to lately? Um, well, everything that you're researching, you know, what's in the pipeline? What have you been up to man? What's kind of a trip about it all is that, it all began way back with Bill Clinton. And so I noticed that moment with Bill Clinton. I don't know what year that was. When was Bill Clinton in office? Uh, 90, 93, 93, 94. 93, when he was brought into the, the court and, you know, made to admit that he had inserted a cigar in his secretary. That moment. Yes. That 12 years of, of, predictions that very moment because i said oh god they don't do this to the president you know this is some sort of psychological warfare to bring down the ideal of the man of the president so they're gonna force a man into office next and then Hmm. i I heard w and i was like oh no w 66 falling (laughs) into office and they did and i said they're gonna make it obvious and they did 
And I said, okay, this will be the year they actually blow up something. So there's going to be a major terrorist attack this year, 9-11. Don't freak out. This is all for your reaction. And I said, and then W is going to be the last American president. And you can go to my blog, the Freeman Perspective.blogspot.com, way back when I, you know, my old blog. Uh, and you can still see where I'm telling you this. You know, before we ever heard the name Obama, I was saying W is the last American president. And so I was predicting the birther movement, saying, you know, the next one's going to be considered a non American, non constitutionally viable president because uh, that's the next step. And then, then the whole cloning thing began, all right? And I want to skip over that for now, but that wasn't part of this puzzle. This puzzle all started with Bill Clinton and said, okay, if they need to bring down the man, then they need to bring down the system, then they need to bring down the Constitution. So next is to bring it all together and bring out the globalization. So we're watching the nightmare of Trump versus Trump. Hillary. Yes. And I don't know if I'm missing the debate right now or if it's tomorrow. Uh, but I honestly did want to see it, but I don't really have television. I'd have to like get in rabbit ears or something. Same here, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch yeah. it on YouTube later. Yeah, no television but, either, man. We but got- so this whole meltdown of an election is falling into the exact. Okay, when I predicted nine eleven, the idea was, hey, look, they've got Tom Ridge as the head of Homeland Security. They don't have a Homeland Security, so what's the a head of? So they need something to make him the head of something. So that's why I knew they needed a major terrorist attack for the middle of September so that in October the bill would pass and Tom Ridge would have a legitimate job. So now I'm saying, look, Obama has established the 10 council, the council of 10 governors. And these are the very same regional governors that in the 1970s people were talking about with the 10 regions of America controlled by the U.N. Now Obama has passed executive order or something like 15 to 328 to establish, you can look up Council of Governors, and the Council of Governors is this internal structure for military operation inside of the United States, right? And uh, so that's the 10 regional governors of the UN control. So that means the election needs to melt down completely in order for this to rise up. And just like what I said when I was predicting 9-11, it was because I Tom Ridge already had a job that didn't exist. Now these 10 governors have a job that don't exist yet. And, you know, so that would be the next thing. How do you, what, how do you, how do you think this all plays in with what's going on right now with, uh, with CERN and um, this whole transhumanism movement that's coming about? I know that there's um a lot of interesting stuff that's that we're broaching on with like uh, quantum computing. You know, the I, what was it? The uh, China just released a quantum satellite that will further encrypt their technology. I mean, we're definitely moving along in this this technological age where things are just moving exponentially, man. Um, Moore's law for sure. You know, um, what do you? Th- how do you see this playing into it all? I keep telling people to keep in mind the politics of immortality. Yes. And that's the stuff kind of like what you see on the Georgia Guidestones, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, the politics of immortality means you need a whole lot, be less people. Mm. Uh, But the fact that no one is freaking out at all, that Google owns uh, quantum computers, AI technology and DARPA military killer robots I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was interesting because Re- Regina Dugan, she was the head of DARPA. Uh, she was advanced research projects and she was, she went to Google, right? Regina uh, Dun- uh, Dugan. And she was, she was talking about how a lot of these um, secrets that uh, they discover are just secrets that are just better uh, in nature. Uh, nature has a wealth of knowledge and, and history that, they tend to weaponize and use for their advantage. Well, CERN's working on a tabletop sized particle Alex accelerator. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, China's working on a particle accelerator twice the size of CERN and seven times its power. Wow. So what, what prompts these people to spend billions of dollars, nations upon nation are fighting to give CERN money. Mm-hmm. And all we know that it does is make pretty spectral pictures that they call the god particle technically that was actually called the goddamn particle they just find that very 
you know, politically friendly, <laughs> yeah, but if you look it up, it's it's actually the goddamn particle. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they just call it the god particle, which is kind of funny because everybody, you know, takes it all wrong. I'm like, you know. But yeah, so, you know, you're looking at the politics of immortality. You're looking at the fact that they're about to transmit their souls into computers and back into robots. And, you know, Michael Jackson was doing all this crap back in the 80s. <laughs> you know, like Yuri Geller and all that. He was going to get transferred into. He would never moonwalk again. Uh, but, you know, that's that's what we need to be thinking about is the politics of immortality and realizing that this planet's much crazier than everyone thinks and all this shenanigans that's playing out in front of them. It's just a big show. Speaking about um, Michael Jackson, what do you say about all this Corey Feldman stuff that's in the news? I don't know. You haven't, don't ha- know what yeah, you haven't seen. He's got a new band out, Corey and uh, Corey's Angels, and he did this. No. Yeah, he did a. Uh, oh, the poor Corey's. Man, yeah. Yeah, the whole know. child, uh, child abuse. Yeah, you know, they tried. Yeah. They actually tried to ask him about that on on the View, and he wouldn't go into it because nah. of, because of Corey's mom. And uh, but no, they're like smearing his name, and because he 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 got a little band out now, and they're putting out a CD. And he did a performance, and the performance was really weird, man. He's out there in a little cloak and a hood and stuff, and he's doing these little weird dances and stuff. And the internet blew up over it, uh, just kind of like making fun of him. And he he's like all yeah. depressed over it. And he's he's making the he's making the rounds through the media about that. I didn't know if you've heard of anything on that or even seen no, it. I, you definitely, I you definitely need to check it out, man. But that all stems into the whole Disney. All the people that all the people that come out of Disney come out disturbed, especially the women. Man, they come come out of Disney turned out. You know, like oh yeah, oh, Tyra yeah, Banks, like stars. all of those Britney, women in Britney in, like, Spears, Christina Aguilera, Ariana Grande, all of them just every come one of them freaks. It's like every what the fuck, you know? Miley, Miley, yeah. MK Ultra. <laughs> hey, speaking of of of. Hollywood, ha- ha- Freeman. Have you seen Stranger Things yet? I just ordered the vinyl. I didn't expect that vinyl to go like super viral. Man, it was like it sold out right away. I had to, I had to score a copy. Uh, the, well, the the Netflix original TV series, Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, they, the, the vinyl just came out. Have yeah. Have you done anything on that? Have you done some some research on it into? What it, what it's getting. Not really, you know, once you lay the foreground for it, then, you know, you just kind of feel like you're stumbling over the same thing. I don't want to keep repeating myself. And now yeah. it's come to the point where MK Ultra is just part of the plot line. You know? Yeah. So, um, you know, it, you, I would have said the same thing about if we were talking about uh, uh, Firestarter, you know, go all the way back to Stephen King and, and Firestarter and you got that same story already. Right. They just made it into E.T. meets Poltergeist meets. Yeah, definitely some E.T. themes in there. With yeah. some of the scenes, you're like, hold on, did they steal this from E.T.? It's yeah. a great show, though, man. You're going to love it. Poltergeist, it's a, it's yeah. a great show. Yeah. Definitely but it's great. great. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I'm excited to get the vinyl. I've become quite a vinyl head. I can't stop. I love it. That's what's I really up, love man. music. Yeah, everybody's man. raving yeah, over the uh, the soundtrack, yeah. Going over music, like uh, True Seeker, he's a rapper. Let's talk about some of your... Uh musical influences because i know you're you have your own band you learn you're playing the bass now yeah oh so definitely rip yeah, you yeah, out some of that. Line. uh yeah, yeah i know I some of your really bass myself, yeah. the bass yet, you know i know you love jane's addiction and all that man yeah jane's addiction i was a i, I was a big kiss fan yeah <laughs> i have i have a i still have all my cheap trick albums yeah. um Marla was, uh, I was watching that interview you did with Sean Young and she, you showed, uh, your Prince album, Purple Rain. Oh yeah. And, uh, Marla has that same album and she was telling me that she admired the fact that you, uh, you were a big Prince fan. Yeah. Oh she was yeah. was enjoying yeah. that perspective you had on the conspiracy aspect of it because it's, it's, uh, you know, sad what happened on him, man. You know, uh-huh. the elevator. The elevator. Yeah, yeah. What are the yeah, uh, man. Uh, all yeah. those guys that died? David Bowie, Prince, and um, Michael Jackson. You know, these guys were all into magic, all into even Ordo Templi Orientis. They were 
extraterrestrial people, absolutely. Yeah. Prince, David Bowie, and Michael Jackson. Yeah, and totally. you got Jackson looking for his clone. You can go to Clone Aid right now, and you can see on the front page Clone Aid, they're all excited they got Jackson's DNA. You know, they're going to clone Michael Jackson. Then you can go to Forbes magazine, they're all excited because they're going to clone John Lennon. But beyond that, these guys, man, are they really dead? You know, did Michael Jackson time travel to ancient Egypt? Is Bowie on <laughs> planet somewhere they're about to re-release the man that fell to earth and it's just you know these guys these three it's almost like the movie or the book if you've read the book atlas shrugged of ayn rand where all the the elite are starting to vanish and yeah. the best artists and the best architects and the best doctors they're all vanishing and why doesn't madonna die I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, her and uh, yeah. And, that, that thing, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, they're, they're definitely cleaning up her blood, right? Don't they have a DNA crew that, that is this clean, cleans up her her blood every time she does a, a and then she pays homage. What to are all they the hiding? Stuff. You know, what does she have to hide? Do you notice, like, when one of these uh, artists pass away, always Madonna pays a tribute to him, like David Bowie, Michael Jackson, Prince. It's like, and then they come out back as a hologram. Yeah, like, why she's don't the you die, Madonna. I know, it's scary, right? it's the, the, the creepy ones never die it's like a horror movie you know yeah. the most heinous character makes it to the yeah. bitter end what about uh, captain eo man did you see that i seen that at disney yeah it yeah it's in at disney man i never heard of it went a couple of years ago and seen it man it was powerful i was like tearing up just it's just, quite a trip yeah just seeing the magic that that guy had man that guy was otherworldly man he had something oh, else man and his his life was dedicated to that. People don't talk about it, but like Michael Jackson had an obsession with Prince as well. Back in the early eighties, if you remember, he saw him as a very like major, you know, problem in terms of competition in the music world. I believe it. Prince and people is- were always talking about like he was obsessed with Prince. That you seen the famous uh, video of uh, James Brown and where he calls up Michael Jackson and, and he keeps whispering in James Brown's ear to call up Prince, call up Prince. Then he huh. calls Prince up and Michael Jackson leaves the stage. Let's no way. Yeah, it's on yeah. YouTube. Michael Jackson, Prince, and uh, James Brown. Right. And uh, Prince was not happy at all for him calling him out like that. Nah. Yeah. All three of them on the stage, but Mike happened to leave just when Prince got there. Right. <laughs> what about this? I got a headline for you, Freeman. It says, Michael Jackson, Insider reveals Michael Jackson was chemically castrated as a young boy. Have you heard any of the research or theories on that about um, some of the they other, were, like, I, I know some of the other cultures would take their young boys who they wanted them from a child to be a singer and it would castrate them and it would, it would actually help them sing in higher octaves. Have you heard yeah, anything about sure. that? Uh, I wouldn't put it past Joe. I hate to say that, but I wouldn't. Uh, but, um, yeah, there was a report that I never could find again when Michael was in trouble for the sexual assault of children. Mm. And they had shown that it was physically impossible, that he had a mutilated penis. Wow. And so that came and went. And it's that kind of thing that if you heard it, you heard it. And you, you can't prove it afterwards, you know. So yeah. I heard it. I don't know what to say. But I never did believe in the whole child molestation. Me neither. Me neither. Maybe a little, but not completely. I, I didn't believe in that at all, man. I just thought he was just like a kind soul. And when billions, when you're a billion a child, you know, when, when you're a billionaire, man, he was a traumatized little kid. Yeah. I mean, his brothers were having sex around him while he was a baby, you know, growing up with the band, and you know, he had to deal with a lot. He's just a traumatized, you know, everyone. I think- or trauma-based mind control victim. Yeah. I think he was a good soul, and it's sad. And it's sad how everyone mocked him when he was alive. And now we want him back. Bring him back. We miss him. We love him. Yeah. You know, yet while he was here, we were cracking on him because he he had that skin disease. I, Let's I, make you know. I tell you what, though, it, it it is strange to see how America's idols have fallen. Though it's how he was like the king of pop or the king of the world, right? And he was like the number one guy. They were like in his videos, these huge statues of him. Like he would, people would faint in his presence and girls would cry and melt. But then he died as like the laughing stock of the entire world, man. And just shows you how like that stardom, how they put you up there and then they construct you to fall before the face of the of, of Janice, everyone, I think Barca uh, is it Barcelo uh, from the Free Your Mind uh, conference. She talks a lot about how a lot of these children that are born into some, they're born to be great are usually targeted 
uh, by these elites or by some type of archons and controlling them even before they're born into the earth, you know, because they know what their, their, their life path is going to be. They know that they're going to affect great change. Have you heard anything about that Freeman? No, I only go for what I can prove. I don't yeah. like, you know, uh, I know that she, um, she, all, but she also talks about how at, at birth, you know, a lot of these, there's a lot you of know, trauma that these kids are being faced with. Um, yeah, I still uh, cringe when she talks about I, circumcision. Yeah, she, she talks about, she about that stuff, man. Every moment of that trauma, to, I don't. But you go watch Janice's show and yeah. tell me if you don't cringe at the at the circumcision. Tell me if you're not a trauma. You wonder why we're thinking about extraterrestrial one. beings. You know, she's, you a mutual, she's a mutual. She's a mutual friend on Facebook, man. I can't watch her stuff too much uh-huh. about the Jews and this and that. I'm like, well, there's oh, that layer too, but God. just the trauma of it all. Is just too much for me. I just don't follow her. I got my friends all hanging out, and I feel bad, but I wanted to make sure to, you know, show up. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming. No, on, I, dude. I thank you, man, for coming on, man. You know, it was a- hey. So for the for the people that are tuning in, what's next? What's in the pipeline before you go? What should we be expecting? If, if you want to take this time to make a plug, I never uh, know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, just go to freemantv.com. Check it all out. It's all free. I mean, come on. And, uh, you know, or you can subscribe and help me out and help me, you know, keep chasing this monster. But, you know, the whole goal here had been to open the world to the occult, but not to demonize it. So, you know, I got full works of magic all around me. Right. And it's not demonic work. You just don't understand when, until you, you really start to dig in and understand what these things are saying. So it wasn't enough for me to hear everybody say, oh, it's Satan, it's Satan, it's Satan. I want to know what that means. I want to yeah. know what this all means. And um, so, you know, it's always been this exploration into the occult side of things. And then also, I'm, you know, I'm a science fiction buff. So I can't help but follow glow in the dark cats. I mean, come on, they're cloning <laughs> your pet, you know? And this is crazy. So uh yeah, that's my true passion is just to follow these stories. And honestly, I've said from the very beginning that I've never went looking for any of this information. It all came looking for me. And I was just a vessel yeah. for it. I yeah. I don't even remember where everything came from or why. Where's I was, the name Freeman uh, come from? You know, where's the name Freeman come from? That one you'll have to read Robert Anton Wilson's Illuminatus trilogy. When did you come up with the name, or when when did you apply the name? It was put upon me. I uh, I didn't want to be number three at this restaurant I was working at, so I stood up and said, "I'm not a number. I'm a free man." (laughs) <laughs> put that on my name tag good stuff and i've been freeman ever since the fly see i was always just freeman and which was kind of a bitch because when i would <laughs> go on like tex mars they would introduce me as and jack blood did this too i can't believe it they, as i'm coming on to That's talk so- about the heinous works of madonna and prince they're 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 introducing me as freeman just a single name you know like madonna or prince and i'm like you're gonna relate me to the people i'm about to come on here and demonize you suck so but the the fly the freeman jack, fly, jack, uh, blood, jack blood is a weird guy man yeah he's he's quite a character i like jack a lot we i like him too it. but it's i don't get <laughs> yeah well he's 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 a man he's he, yeah i like jack uh <clears throat> But the fly. So my company was Blue Fly Productions. That's okay. because Project Blue Fly, other than Blue Book, was when there was actually actually an extraterrestrial running around on planet Earth. So I chose Blue Fly Productions to basically claim that I was an extraterrestrial running around on planet Earth. And that's why my email is Blue Fly Free, because I'm Blue Fly Free, right? Anyway. Uh, I went to buy that website and at that very moment, bluefly.com came out. Like I had already had my TV show where it said blue fly productions. Yeah. But the moment I went to go buy bluefly.com, it became this shopping store. So oh, if you go wow. to bluefly.com right now, you'll find it's a shopping, you know, it's like a Walmart <laughs> online. And I'm just like, how and why, why would they call their company blue fly? That's bizarre. You know, I know why I did cause it's aliens, you know? But why did this company suddenly steal my URL? So I ended up, you know, with freemantv.com. 
and uh it's been that for almost 12 years now so there's like just 12 years of crazy madness with the high priest of the church of satan or evangelicals looking at alum illuminati hand signs you know i go all over the place trying to explore this situation without any bias yeah well, thank you so much thank for you. coming on the show, Freeman. Man, can we yes. have you back on for another one? It would be awesome for you to that come back. Amazing. Yeah, we'll do it again. I didn't know my friends were going to stay. All they good, ended brother. Up thank you, big brother, we, Freeman, we enjoy for coming the time, on. man. Yeah, thank you, Alonzo. Here's to you, by the way, Freeman, for uh, for doing what you, Cheers, you do. Cheers, Mr. You're prolific. You got to come on with the <laughs> bass next time. Play the bass for us, man. I wanted to. It's just so much equipment. I thought about setting up in there, but they're already yeah. jamming. So. Yeah, yeah awesome, you have to, we have to have you on while you're jamming, man. Next right. Time. Well, okay. Molecularband.com. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's my website for the band. Awesome. Molecularband.com. That's you and Leonard. We'll check right? that out. Put huh? it in the show notes. That's you and yeah, yeah, yeah. Leonard. Yeah, yeah, Leonardo Rizzo, yeah. famous Grammy-nominated musician that he is. He's, He's one of uh, Freeman's uh, – yeah, I, I host the home for Wayward Genius here. <laughs> and so – they, yeah, they man, you got to meet soon, man, because we've been doing stuff together for almost a year. So, man, you got to meet soon because I know you, you invited me to the Free Your Mind. Yeah, I didn't go. I didn't Free Your Mind, yeah. yeah I didn't go because you know why I shared that I with know, you. I know because you're a fool. <laughs> free Your Mind, your ass will follow. Clap you, man. <laughs> I will be there next one. year, man. Next year it'll be good. It'll be me versus Michael Tessarian. Oh, that's why. Really? Are you going to have Tessarian there? Really? Okay. Looks yeah, like they're, they're having to make it out oh, there. I hate that. Right. That's why really I'm gonna be there. That's why I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be to your right, and, and your Lenny will be to your left. So, this yeah. happens around April, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. No, definitely. Right. I want to make it out to the next one. I'm gonna Amazing. be there. Man. It's and a good time. Expect, Seriously, I mean, like I said, two Mexicans to show up in the conference themselves. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You get to meet everyone. Everybody's friend. There. I got to make it out there, man. To be doing what I do and have never been to any of these conferences, man, it's not a good yeah. look. Although I saw one video of a guy running around the conference filming occult symbols on everybody. And look, oh, my God, they got. Oh, yeah, I, I seen that, too, man. I he's got to make a living, that, man. He's got to make a living. <laughs> I saw that that kid was trying to say you guys had an agenda. I'm like, really? Right. The agenda is no agenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's wow. an open, <laughs> open non-biased to to the occult you know it's like you no know, like uh the howard stern show was there right yeah i never knew if i was on or not wow. yeah you, know, you have to find out if i was on howard stern as a anti-semite awesome hey <laughs> I, I got i got a quick question i just want to ask you if you know okay. this guy because i just found out about him like yesterday have you heard of tiny tiny tim uh yeah i just found out about him the dude was amazing man I learned a bit. Yeah, I know. Tiny I Tim. I would have to look deeper. You know, Tiny Tim was something else, but I didn't really, you know, I mean, I, I remember him when he was popular. Yeah. Tiptoe through the tulips. Yeah. yeah. yeah I just exactly. found out about that yesterday. I was like, I was pissed off at the internet for not finding out about him earlier. I thought you it was dope. That. No. Man, you can get anything on I the know. end. I was like, that dude was odd, Tiny Tim. Man. He reminded me of Manson. I, we got some Manson stories we're going to cover here in a little bit. He reminded me of Marilyn Manson. And I'm a huge Manson fan. I was like, man, that dude he was before his time. If I'm not mistaken. He was before right, his time. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I was at a riot at his concert. Oh wow. Yeah, they they kept breaking the barricade. You're talking about Manson? Manson, right? The audience yeah. on the stage, and he just walked off stage and everybody rioted. Have you ever made it out to a a, a burning man? <laughs> I am anti burning man. Are you? Because of yeah, the rainbow. history it has or what? Huh? The history that it has, I know it has a lot of... No, it's just I'm rainbow, and it's yeah. like the complete opposite of rainbow. It's like I'm... if you asked me if I was a deadhead, I'd be like, no, nah, you know, I'm rainbow. Although I toured with the dead for many years, I've never been a deadhead. I'm a rainbow. I love the rainbows, by the way. I was out in Apple Valley at the hot springs out there, and the ra- there was a rainbow gathering out there. Some of the most beautiful, positive people I've ever been around, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Mega death yeah, fan? It saves the soul. It really does, guys. Yeah. Are you making so maybe we'll all go to Rainbow next year? There you go. Okay. I'd much rather sit in the mud with you. Okay. Go <laughs> cool in the hot springs. That. Yeah. Walk around naked. I'll get, pay get for everyone. We'll go. Get your uh, get your nude on. <laughs> all right. We'll find out. We'll, we'll hey. know where it is June of next year. So. All right. Much love for you uh, to you, and thank you for uh, yeah coming on again, man. Yeah, thank yeah, you. yeah. Legend. Thank, thank you, you for coming through, my friend. 
We're going to all talk more just off the air, and then we'll talk more on the air. Sounds good, Definitely. brother. Bless. All right. All right. Stay positive. Peace. Much love. Yeah, Peace. get in touch. We'll do, man. Awesome, y'all. Freeman right. Fly, guys. Ladies and gentlemen. That was awesome.